What's expected to drive trade today and get the call from IG with Cameron Peacock now. Cameron, good to see you there. Yeah, what, what do you think? I mean, the SPY futures are uh, looking like it should be a pretty strong start to trade. Yeah, that's right. Good morning, Bridie. Look, after a, a flattish finish yesterday, we are looking at a stronger start for our market today. And in fact, we should test the, uh, the, uh, the highs of the year, which we reached last week. Now, it was on Tuesday last week. Uh, we posted a 15-month high or touched a 15-month high of uh, 45.12. And based on the strong performance, which we did see last night across Europe and the US, we're currently calling the market up about uh, 30 points or 0.7% or up around uh, 45.13. So, you know, we did have positive sessions in Europe and the US last night. In Europe, we had the FTSE up uh, 0.2, the DAX up 0.4, the CAC up uh, 0.9. Um, stocks there, um, you know, continue to, to chop around up one day, down the next. Um, there's no real rhyme or reason to trading at the moment. And I think all the issues uh, which we've been talking about in recent uh, days and weeks are still there. But last night's sentiment was certainly boosted by some comments from the German finance minister Wolfgang Schauble who came out and basically said that Greece would not default and an exit would be bad for the region. So really reiterating uh, Germany's support for Greece. Uh, we also had uh, Europe responding quite positively to some of that Chinese data which we've seen over the last couple of days. Obviously on the weekend they had that stronger than expected trade surplus number with strong exports growth that uh, eased fears of a, of a hard landing. And then we had the CPI data out yesterday which showed CPI back under 2% signalling that there's certainly more room uh, for, the, uh, for the government to, uh, to add more stimulus if required. So they so certainly helped uh, get European shares off uh, on the front foot. Uh, the US, as you mentioned, had a very strong session. We had the Dow Jones up 95 points or 0.7 of a percent. Uh, the S&P up, uh, I think, 0.8 and the Nasdaq up 0.6. Uh, that was uh, on the basis of uh, some strong retail sales numbers and corporate earnings. Retail sales in September rose 1.1%, uh, surpassing the 0.7 of a percent that the market had expected. We also saw the August number revised up uh, from 0.9% to 1.2%. We did see the Empire State Manufacturing uh, Survey uh, continuing to, or, uh, in contractionary territory again, but improving from a reading of negative 10.4 to a reading of negative uh, 6.2. So that was something positive. And then I guess the, the headline uh, earnings number of the, the night uh, being Citigroup uh, came in ahead of expectations on both the earnings and the revenue front. So those shares were up 5.5% and uh, you know, certainly set US markets on their way. I think um, you know of the 38 companies that have currently reported uh, in this earnings season, some 27 uh, have beaten on uh, on earnings, and you know that's sort of helping ease those fears that this was going to be a very poor earnings season. I just wanted to ask you because one of the guests we were speaking to earlier was pointing out, you know, the, the disconnect in what we've been seeing in trading for some time. You know, equity markets seem to be risk on, yet you look at uh, a number of those other uh, markets, you know, the US dollar, euro, you look at the bonds, Spanish bonds uh, in particular, uh, there certainly wasn't, and commodities, there wasn't a risk on trade going on. Yeah, it's funny you mention it. We were talking about this uh, yesterday. I think um, you know, on Friday session, you had uh, European markets and U.S. markets lower, but you had the risk currencies all a little bit higher. And then we saw the reverse of that uh, in trading yesterday. So there is a little bit of a disconnect at the moment, and I think that's just a reflection of the uncertainty in the market at the moment. Um, as we've been discussing it uh, at length in the last couple of weeks, there's all these uh, big event risks uh, towards the end of the year, and I think you've got very divided opinions as to you know who's going to win the U.S. election, uh, which. China's at in terms of its growth trajectory, what's happening in Europe, uh, is the fiscal cliff going to be a, a big issue or is, uh, are the two parties going to come together and solve the problem? There's a lot of uncertainty there at the moment and hence we're seeing this very choppy trade at the moment. I mean you look at European shares over the last two weeks, they've been sort of up 0.6 one day, down 0.7 the next day and, and just o oscillating around current levels, all, albeit trading towards the top end of current ranges. The same with the, uh, the euro itself, it's really just been stuck in that sort of 128 to 131 range and just sort of moving up and down on a, on a daily basis without any real uh, sort of pattern or, or, or uh, reasoning to, to what it's doing. So I think that's just a reflection of the uncertainty in the market as we head into the back end of the year. And looking at the Aussie dollar, obviously we've got some key events this week. We've got the RBA minutes today, China data later in the week. Still though, holding firm around that 102.5 US cent level. Is that surprising you how, how strong it is given you know, what, what we've been seeing in markets? No, not really. I mean, I, I, I never really take too much of a firm view on currencies because uh, when you do that, you generally get it wrong. But, um, you know, the Aussie dollar has, uh, you know, held fairly firm above that 101 area. It seems to have topped out 
every time we get up to that sort of 104, 105 area. But, um, you know, we do have the prospect of further uh, rate cuts weighing on the Aussie dollar. But uh, every time you get a, a, a risk on day, the, the Aussie dollar benefits because it still does uh, maintain that uh, significant yield advantage over most of the other major Western economies. So it is being pulled in, in different directions and I just see it sort of oscillating around current levels for the, uh, for the time being. Great to get your thoughts, Cameron. Thank you so much for that. Thanks, Bridie.